You are listening to Single Smart Female. This is Jen, explaining the possibilities in your love life and examining your mantourage dating experiences. I am here to help you do life and love on your terms by tipping the scales of love permanently in your favor. So don't forget to text this episode to all of your single smart girlfriends and let's get started. Hello, my single smart female, it's your romantic fairy god mama. Here today to bring you a single smart female listener question. Now this question comes all the way from Chicago. And it's from Miss Likes to Play with Fire. Now Miss Likes to Play with Fire writes, Dear Jen, I had a three-year relationship with my ex that took a toxic turn after the second year. We broke up multiple times and I didn't like how he made me feel. Insecure, small, unheard. Or who I became when I was with him. After our last breakup, I moved to a new continent for work for about nine months. He came to visit me about three months in and we had amazing, incredible sex. But then I found out he had begun to see other people. I was hurt and angry because I didn't know what we were to each other. Since then, contact between us has slowly dwindled, and I started dating a different guy just for fun. My work contract is almost over, and I'll be heading back home where he is in a month. Last, the ex, by the way, where he is in the month. Now, last night, we talked on the phone for the first time in weeks, and I'm planning on mantourage dating when I get back home, but I can't get the idea of my ex and the sex out of my head. I know we are not meant to be in a relationship as we bring out the worst in each other, but I was wondering if it would be okay to potentially add him to the mantourage. I'm aware there is a risk of rekindling dormant feelings for him, but I can't get the sex-filled images out of my head. Please help, Jen. Is it ever a good idea to add an ex to your mantourage? Okay, Miss likes to play with fire. Let's dive into this. So this answer is a little complicated. Because there are, I mean, your main question, is it ever a good idea to add an ex to your mantrage? There are situations that it's perfectly acceptable, but we have to dive into your situations specifically and distill whether or not this is actually a good idea. And so I'm going to, um, now I'm going to dive into the part where you say, he made me feel insecure, small, and unheard. Okay, here's the thing. It's not okay for me to just say, well, you know what? Based on that, no, absolutely not. Why? Because there's not the complete story here necessarily. There could be, but not necessarily. So what you have to ask yourself is, did he do this to you? Or is this how you chose to feel based on possible misinterpretation of how he shows up? Okay, so here's the thing. I can't tell you how many women get shit wrong with men. And we get pretty butthurt in relationships because we misinterpret what their intentions are and what is going on and then decide that this man is the devil himself and completely just lose it and then kind of go into victim mode with them where he is always triggering us. But here's the thing. I don't know what actually happened in your specific situation, so you have to analyze that. And you have to decipher, were you misinterpreting him and jumping to conclusions and overreacting in certain situations? Or was he a legit douchebag who treated you poorly, who deliberately didn't listen to you and just decided and treated you like absolute trash? Okay. And for me to tell you, you know, because we do as women, we think it's always a guy's fault. And there are legit situations where that is 100% accurate, but it's not 100% true all the time. Women have a tendency to overreact in certain situations because of our nature. And you have to be the one in this situation to take the step back and go through that, analyze and process that and say, hey, is this actually accurate or is this my interpretation based on how I was showing up? And then, or, and then that's the other thing. Sometimes, Men react to us because of the way that we're treating them. If we're constantly berating them, tearing them down, just overanalyzing them, telling them that they do stuff wrong, they kind of just give up because there's no winning with you. And you, Miss Likes to Play With Fire, have to decide specifically 
what happened in this situation. Was it you? Was it him? Was it both of you? And then you can have a more accurate assessment of whether or not the two of you are toxic together. Okay, because that's what's really important here. Because if you're indeed truly toxic together, if he is indeed truly, you know, going out of his way to make you feel insecure, small, and unheard, then yeah, I think it would be a good idea to keep him out of your mantourage, full stop, all right? But on the same page, if you have assess that that's not exactly what was going on and that maybe you did show up in a way that made him feel like it was impossible to win with you, then there is possibility here. Again, it's, it's really hard to decipher in this context, but those are the questions that you have to ask yourself. Now, let's go to the incredible sex part. So I love awesome sex. I love hearing women tell me that they're having awesome sex, you know, that mind-blowing sex with somebody. But there's a couple pieces to this that have to be acknowledged. Here's the thing. A lot of times we will be drawn head over heels to a guy that triggers something below the belt in us that makes us feel more like a woman than we've ever felt. Now, why is that? Well, because we're playing hardball in a very masculine way in society. So we have a lot of decision fatigue. We don't ask for what we want. We feel like we have to do everything. We're emotionally, physically, spiritually exhausted. And one of the major feminine concepts is to be able to receive. So if we go into a sexual situation that all of a sudden, you know, we feel very masculine in most of our life, but all of a sudden we get to feel, it's just a snap of your fingers and you get to feel like a woman and he really triggers that below your belt where you momentarily feel feminine, you're going to be automatically drawn to him. Automatically drawn to him. By the way, since the two of you are not in a relationship right now, if you end up having sex at all, please, for the love of all that's adored, make sure you put a condom on. Not just for the, the STI protection, but also for emotional protection. That's really, really, truly important. Okay, so, but you have to acknowledge that below the belt trigger and you also have to assess whether or not you're not feeling feminine in other parts of your life. And it doesn't mean feeling feminine doesn't mean you can't kick ass, but it's how you're arranging your life that makes you feel always in the masculine and exhausted from always being in the masculine. Because a woman who is in her feminine, meaning in her receiving mode, is really, truly powerful. And we don't acknowledge that as women. We don't understand that as women. And so when we come to it and it happens to us, which is what I do and help women with and learn how to do in mentorage dating, when we encounter that feminine and we learn to embrace it in a way that helps us create everything and what we want in our life, at the beginning, women start to reject that because they're like, oh shit, this is wrong. I'm not supposed to be doing this. This means I'm not a good woman. This means this. And we make it mean a whole bunch of shit in our head that it doesn't actually mean. So First off, all of that, I wanted to wrap that in a nice little package to tell you, is we have to acknowledge that this guy might be triggering that part of you, that whole below the belt trigger that makes you feel more like a woman. And yes, I'm glad that you're having incredible sex, but it also sounds like to me you haven't been actively mantraging. It sounds like you've gone from one guy to another guy, and now you're asking me, should you include the ex in the mantraage because i I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. There's a whole lot of hyper-focus talk right around that entire conversation that I hear coming from you. And you're talking about going back to Chicago. And when you go back to Chicago, yes, you're going to a mantourage date, theoretically. I'm not quite sure as much as I like you. I'm not quite sure I believe you because what I think is going to happen is you're going to go straight back and focus on this guy. And even if you half ass or kind of go through the motions of mantourage dating, that doesn't mean you're mantourage dating. Why? Because you've got the hyper-focus on him. So you have to be very thorough in analyzing what you're actually doing and how you're showing up in reference to him. So it's great. I like sex-filled images. They're fantastic to get off to, okay? But what's important is that you learn how to mantourage date the right way. You have to disconnect that hyper-focus. 
And when you do start to learn to mantraj date, then when you get into the dating portion and you decide to go into a relationship, there's no longer feeling this massive insecurity, feeling small or unheard, unless you absolutely choose to do that. It is impossible for a woman, an adored woman, to go into a relationship and feel all those things because she knows herself so well, she will not take herself into a situation where that happens. And let's say worst case scenario, something does happen. She knows how to excuse herself immediately. Now, bringing all that together, I'm going to say right now would not be the, the best time for you to include this, this man in your mantraj. It may not be good at all because, I'm, again, I'm not quite sure whether or not your history, your tumultuous history, was it abusive? Was it, you know, was it him? Were there things that you were doing that were stimulating this disengaged response from him? Was he actively putting you down? And having to know the difference between all those, because those are some serious differences that to consider whether or not you should see any of them. So for instance, if he was actively putting you down, if he was actively doing all those things to try to make you feel insignificant and small, so he knowingly engaged in tearing your self-esteem apart, then hell fucking no. I wouldn't be sleeping with him. I wouldn't be around. I don't care how good the sex is. You can have great sex with lots of people, but really great sex is never worth the abuse, okay? Take that in. Really, really take that in. So now what's going to happen is you have to take this time as you, you get back. I would not immediately go to him whatsoever. You need to take time to assess and you need to take time to build real talent in your mantraj. One guy is not real talent. Three to four, possibly that you're actively going out with and enjoying and, and engaging with and getting to know and exploring romantic possibilities with. That's a real active and talented Mantourage. And until you have that piece, and if you need help, you can go to mantouragedating.com. But until you have that piece in play and you've analyzed all those other pieces that we talked about, you shouldn't even be considering this. Now, finally, back to the question that we addressed at the beginning Are there times where you can include an X in your mantourage? And the answer is absolutely, depending on your relationship history. This is especially an okay idea for women who maybe stopped dating someone even though they were treating them very well just because they didn't know what was going on, things like that. Those kind of guys, 100% are great to include in your mantra and you learning the new framework that you need to know to discover yourself romantically will have a new appreciation for these men. So even if it doesn't work out, you'll still leave them in a better place having been around a woman, an adored woman who really enjoys them, who engages with them, and who appreciates them. Okay, lover girl, it's time for the final thought on today's show. An ex can be included in your mantraj dating experience only if A, you do not have any hyper-focus with him. B, he has never been emotionally or physically abusive to you. And C, you currently have an active and thriving mantourage. Hey, lover girl, don't forget to subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast app, as well as share this episode with all of your single smart girlfriends. And if you are ready to walk permanently in the adored woman world, and create the love life that you really want instead of the shit that they say that you have to settle for, then listen up. Women who get what they want search out the resources they need in order to make it happen. This is why you've found me, and now it's time to make some badass, magical decisions in your dating and love life. No more half-assed decisions based on false information. No more half-assed dating and constant worry about whether or not you'll hear from him again. No more sustaining yourself on scraps of romantic attention or no attention at all. It's time to call BS on all the haters out there that say smart, successful women are destined to be single. It's time to invest in yourself with the only complete dating experience that has direct access to me and is put together exclusively for women like you. Meet me at secretsocietyofadoredwomen.com for all of the details, including pricing, structure for our time together, 
and to schedule your application interview. See you there.